Hi everybody, Carl here, back uh, with uh, uh, the fifth in this series on uh, <clears throat> using uh, 4NEC2 uh, with manual entry versus using variables. Um, so I think we left off uh, uh, last time. I might have run the uh, optimizer one additional time and, uh, and I saved uh, two... Uh, uh, what we had going on, I went ahead and saved it, and I remember now that I uh, I had forgotten uh, <laughs> to uh, to to hit the save button before I uh, e exited. So I ran it again. We ended up with a uh, a standing wave ratio of 1.17 uh, to one. Um, nice nice flat curve all the way across the, where we need. Uh, let's go over here to impedance. Let me bring that up a little bit. Um, so. Um, we were uh, shooting for 147 megahertz is where I was centering at. Let's see where we're at. That's at 147.5. There's 147. Um, <clears throat> so we ended up with an impedance of 42 ohms with, with the, a nice low um, standing wave ratio. Um, the uh, uh, Let's see where we're at here. Uh, resistance 42 um reactance is uh, a 1.08 you know i mean you can't ask for much more than that uh in my humble opinion and, and until you're actually trimming and uh um maybe want to refine it just a little bit more this is a modeling program it's not going to be exact uh, when you build it because uh, every there's just so many things that uh, are going to be a tiny bit different and especially you know in the two megahertz or yeah, in uh, the two meter range, you know, a tiny bit of trim makes a lot of difference. So, so anyway, I want to move on from there. We're going to scale this up uh, to, uh, I think we're going to scale it up to 10 meters uh, just just to show uh, what's going on. Um, but I wanted to show you uh, where, where I was coming from uh, before we do. So we're just going to take what we had worked on before and uh, to scale it up to 10 meters, let's go uh, the center of the... Uh, um, of the, the foam portion of the band, um, which is 29 megahertz. A um, <clears throat> little bit of math uh, that uh, comes out to 8 foot or 96 inches, since we're working in inches here. Um, it, it's 96 inches as a quarter wave. So we're going to go uh, first over to, uh, to our source, and I'm sorry, to our frequency and ground. We're going to change this to 29 megahertz. We're going to go back to our symbols tab, um, and we're H1. Remember, is the height off ground. Okay, H2 is H1 plus it was 19 inches. We're going to turn this into um, H1, which is our height above ground, plus 96 inches. Um, now re remember the optimizer. I saved those uh, the results from the optimizer. And we had started out, I think, at 158 inches above ground level. We're at 234.55. So 235 inches above ground level is where we're starting now. Um, we're going to make the antenna itself, the, the radiator, 96 inches uh, the, to the tip of it above that. Um, and we can run it now, but we haven't touched. Uh, matter of fact, I'll do that just real quick. We'll, we'll run it real quick. Uh, do a frequency sweep. Let me change. We got to change the frequencies that we're we're scanning now. Um, let's go uh, twenty nine uh, point three to uh, to twenty nine point seven. Um, I'm gonna make this. A, we're not in quite as much frequency that we're scanning here. Let's make this point two five and see if it'll take that. Um, let's do a quick frequency sweep and see what our result is. Okay, there's our new pattern. Um, and, uh, whoops, I lost it there. Let me run it again. Sorry about that. I just want you to see we haven't changed the, the radials at all. And uh, this is just, you know, impossible. It's terrible. Nothing we want to deal with there. So let's go down here and... Uh, RH2, or well, RH1 is the height of our radials at uh, at the base of the antenna. RH2 is that height minus, we we're on two meters, we were 10 inches below that with the tips of our radials. We'll probably have to change. 
We're still at 17 inches, 17, almost 17 and a half with that two meter antenna. And we're gonna just uh, make these a quarter wave. So let's go 96 inches there. Um, let's not change the tips of the radi radials yet. Uh, let's just go ahead and run a frequency sweep and see where we're at. Um, you know, I could just have done this all at once, but I'm I'm really trying to uh, to to give you an idea. Oops, uh, I didn't change something right. Uh, oh, I didn't change the the 19 <laughs> to 96 inches. Okay, so the tip of the the radiator now is going to be 96 inches above <clears throat> the base of our antenna. The the radials will be 96 inches out from the base of our ten, antenna, and they are still hanging down 10 inches. So let's see what we got. Do, do, do. And there it is. There's our new pattern. Um, and I'm not even going to look too closely at it. Uh, our SWR is at 3.61. So for our first shot, that's that's really not too bad. Uh, impedance is uh, <clears throat> uh, a little bit low. We're at uh, 33 ohms. So we're going to go uh, we're going to go back and we're going to drop the tips. Let me show you there. See how they're almost flat. They're just barely, barely lowered. We're going to drop these tips down. Um, let's drop them down 25 inches and see where that puts us. We'll run that real quick. I mean, I, I already did. I'll be honest with you. I already did the math. I, I know where I want to drop them to, but this is for you guys, not for me. I want you to understand uh, what these changes do when you look at it. Um, so that dropped our SWR down to 2.35. Our impedance is now at uh, 33 ohms. I don't remember what it was just a second ago. Um, and uh, <clears throat> our reactants here were at uh, 1195. So we're going to drop this to 50 inches down and see what that does to us. Now, now the tips of the radials are going to be 50 inches down below the base of the antenna. So they're getting closer to run it at a 45 degree angle down. And we wouldn't have to do this. We could we could adjust the antenna height and radial length um, uh, back and forth if we wanted to mess around with it and keep these more flat. Um, that's these don't have to run down. But and we could get all this stuff adjusted out. But um, I'm just showing you the quick down and dirty way to do this using variables. How easy it makes. Uh, everything go okay. If we're at an SWR 1.17 at 29 megahertz. Um, here's our impedance. Um, we're now up at 47 ohms, which is, you know, we're really getting close to 50 ohms of impedance there. Um, my book, that's probably close enough. Um, the uh, <clears throat> reactance is uh, at 15. It could be a little lower, so we, we could do some more adjusting out. But uh, hopefully that give you, gave you an idea of how simple it is. Now remember, if we weren't using these variables, we'd be over here on the geometry tab uh, changing every one of these with every adjustment we make uh, by doing it the manual entry way. So, I mean, variables, if you're, especially if you're just starting with 4NEC, um, you know, I highly recommend you get into the variables right away. It, it would have saved me, had I, had I known about it when I started with it, it would have saved me just tremendous amounts of, of time. Because I, I did some Yaggies, and uh, uh, matter of fact, I don't remember... Uh, I started out on well, my, I've got a five wire fan dipole. And when I started to do it, I was still doing man, manual entry. And by the time I finished, I had, I had discovered the variables and what exactly, how to use them. Um, so it, man, it'll just save you tremendous amounts of time. Um, I'm going to say seven, three for now. If you got any questions or comments, uh, please put them in the comments below the video. Uh, the, uh, uh, if you like it, Click the like button, subscribe, share it with your friends. If you've got somebody that's wanting to start modeling and you think this might help them out, really appreciate it, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm not sure what the next one in this series is going to be. Give me some suggestions in the comments, what you want to see, and um, uh, I'll see what I can do. 7-3, uh, my friends. K-E-0-J-W-K. Bye.